Luke chapter 22, verses 7 to 23, the Last Supper. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb has, had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare for it? they asked. He replied, As you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters and say to the owner of the house. Teacher asks, Where is, my, is the guest room where I meet the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, all furnished, make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them, so they prepared for the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfilment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to that man who betrays him. They said to question among themselves, which of them it might be who would do this. Thank you, Peter, for reading so well for us this morning. Good morning, boys and girls. Today we're going to be thinking about Easter. And I have brought along this hot cross bun because it reminds me about the story of Easter. On the top, you can see a cross. And of course, the cross reminds me that Jesus died on the cross. When the baker was baking the bread, he would have used yeast and that helped the bun to rise. And of course, that reminds me that Jesus didn't only die on the cross, but he rose again. If I turn the bun round at an angle, I can see an X. And this reminds me of the kiss that Judas gave Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane when he betrayed him. And inside the bun, there's lots of fruit. And the fruit reminds me of all the good things that came from Jesus' death and how he gave us the chance to enjoy a fruitful new life. Later, we will be thinking of other food. Have you ever been on a journey? I expect you have, and you've probably traveled by car or by bus or maybe even aeroplane. Well, Jesus was going on a journey and he had to decide how he was going to travel. He was going up to Jerusalem for the Passover, which was a very special meal that was held each year to celebrate the time when the children of Israel left Egypt. Jesus decided that he was going to go riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. He could have chosen a horse or a chariot, but he didn't want people to think that he was coming as an invading soldier or as a powerful ruler. He wanted to show them that he was coming in peace and humility. Now, I have brought along some things this morning to help me tell the story of what happened during Jesus' final week on earth. Now, the first item that I've brought along is this rope. Now, you might wonder, why have I brought along a rope? Well, I've already said that when Jesus rode into Jerusalem, he chose to ride on a donkey. And the Bible tells us that Jesus told his disciples when he was at the Mount of Olives to go on ahead and to find the donkey that was tied and they were to untie it and to bring it to him. And if anyone should ask them why they were untying the donkey, then they were to say, my master has need of it. So that's the first object I brought with me this morning. 
The second thing I brought with me is this cloak or coat, you might want to call it. And as he rode into Jerusalem, the people took off their coats and they placed them on the ground as Jesus walked along. They also tore palm branches off the palm trees and they waved them as Jesus rode by. As well as waving the palm branches and putting the cloaks down on the road, the people also shouted. And the Bible tells us that they shouted, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. So we have a crown to represent Jesus as the King. But he wasn't a king like the people thought of him as being a king to rule over the land. Jesus was the king of kings. Now as he rode along and the people were praising and <coughs> shouting and welcoming him, there were some Pharisees in the crowd and they weren't very happy at what they were seeing and what they were listening to. And it tells us in the Bible that the Pharisees said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. And Jesus told them, he said, I tell you, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out loud. And so I brought along some stones to remind us of the words that Jesus said. Later in the week, Jesus sent two of his disciples to go and find the place where they were going to celebrate the Passover meal. And so he said to them, some days later he said as you go into the city you will find a man carrying a water jug and so we have the jug to remind us of the man who helped the disciples find the place where Jesus and his disciples were going to eat their Passover meal the disciples found the room and they got the food ready they had the bread, which was very different than the bread that we had at the beginning, because this bread had no yeast. And they had prepared the wine. Now, when the disciples and Jesus came to have the Passover meal, at the end of the meal, Jesus gave them some clues about what was going to happen. He took some of the bread and he gave thanks for it and he broke it and he divided it out around his disciples and he said to them eat this and remember that my body will be broken for you now the, the disciples were not at all sure about what Jesus meant then he took the wine and he told them to take a sip and he said remember that my blood was shed for you and do this in remembrance of me and he said this will be a special way of remembering me at the end of the meal as Jesus looked around the table he knew that someone was going to betray him and that brings us to my last thing a bag of silver coins because Jesus knew that Judas was going to betray him and Judas had been paid 30 silver coins in order to do so. When Jesus went to Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, he knew that he was going for a very special reason. He knew that he was going to die on a cross because that was God's will. And so we want to remember what uh, we have learned this week. So we think of Jesus riding into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, how the people welcomed him and praised him for who he was. And then we want to think of that special meal at the end, when Jesus shared the bread and wine and told his disciples to remember him. And we do that today, boys and girls, when we meet in church and have communion. We eat the bread and drink the wine in remembrance that Jesus died for each one of us. 
So let's remember these things this Easter, as we approach Easter. Think of how Jesus died on that cross so that each one of us could be forgiven. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Easter. We thank you for Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. We thank you, O Lord, for how the people praised him. And Lord, we thank you too for how Jesus died on that cross at Calvary so that each of us could have eternal life. And so, Father, we just pray that you will be with us east this Easter. Help us to remember that Jesus died for each one of us because he loved us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.